Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad in Wyoming. Today is February 3rd, 2022. This is layout update number 27. I'm Mark Pruitt, Casper Roundhouse Foreman. Well, the first month of 2022 was very interesting. I visited a layout of a friend I met via this YouTube channel, made some progress on the layout, and survived a COVID infection. Let's take a look. At the end of last month's update, I was in the process of replacing this temporary jury-rigged wiring for Riverton with the permanent wiring. I got that completed and the Powder River area where the temporary wiring was laying is all cleaned up. Then I got to work installing the sub-road bed out of Wind River Canyon and into the south end of Thermopolis. The next day, I added the cork road bed. Then I stopped work for a few days to organize all my flex track. What you see here is all my Code 100 Atlas flex track, which I use for all the hidden trackage on the layout. All but about five sticks of this is used track, and some of it has been on three different layouts now. Most of it, over eight scale miles worth, was a part of this helix on version two of the CB&Q in Wyoming. For the past 10 years, it's set wrapped up in packing paper, just waiting to be reused. I started using it to build the hidden part of the Chicago and Northwestern line on this layout, and I got tired of having to sort through the pile and clean up one piece at a time as I built that line. So I just bit the bullet and pulled out the entire stash, clipped off the soldering ends, and cleaned it all up. This was the final result. Over eight scale miles of track ready to be grabbed and used as if it were new. Since I was on a roll with the Code 100 track, I decided to go ahead and do all the other track as well. Here's the final result, code 100 on the bottom, about two and a half scale miles of code 83 on the next shelf up, code 70 Pico and microengineering on the shelf above that, and finally, a few sticks of microengineering code 55 at the top. With all the track sorting done, I was poised to take the Burlington from the north end of the canyon to the south end of Thermopolis. Super elevating that big curve was a bit tedious, but by midday on the 10th, the curve was in and the caulk was drying. By the end of the day, I had the railheads clean and ran a train around the curve to test it out. The train ran flawlessly over the new curve. After that, I installed two new throttle ports on the layout, this one below Shoban and a second one at Thermopolis. I was running out of the pre-built RJ12 throttle cables I bought some years ago, and I was also getting a bit tired of all the extra length I had to loop around and coil up at each installation. I ran all over town looking for some flat six-conductor cable to no avail. Finally, I ordered a 250-foot roll from DigiKey. I was going to build my own custom-length throttle cables for the entire layout. I was a bit anxious about making my own cables, since I didn't know how hard it might be to get all those contacts in the plugs to work. But I jumped in, starting at the new port at Shoban. I stuck the cable on a quick clamp and began feeding it through holes I drilled in the joists. This made for a much neater installation, and I made the cables the length I needed, plus a few inches. The plug installation tool makes the connections perfectly every time. Then came one of the more interesting events of the month. On the 18th, I drove a bit over three hours to the home of Dave, a retired railroader in Basin, Wyoming. He's also a model railroader, he says the only one in the town of Basin. That's not too surprising, since the entire town has a population of only a bit over 1,200 people. Here's an overall view of Dave's layout. Dave and I met through his comments on some of my videos, and we struck up an email friendship. For the last few months, I've been threatening to drop by, and finally was able to do that this past month. 
I always enjoy visiting other folks' layouts, so I was really looking forward to meeting Dave in person. I did not know how much of a treat I had in store. This short video clip is the upper deck exit from his Helix near his scratch-built Firestone tire facility. This layout runs like a Swiss watch, to use a very old saying. The locomotives didn't stall or hesitate at all on the train I ran. There were no derailments. Dave's track work is superb. I've operated on many layouts, including one or two that were featured in Model Railroader magazine. Dave's layout is the smoothest operating one I have ever seen. Here's the Firestone plant I mentioned. This is a big facility and well done. Dave says he still has a lot of detail work to do on it, but believe me, like the rest of his layout, it is very impressive. Thanks for having me up, Dave. I look forward to the next visit. Seeing Dave's layout spurred me on to make more progress on my own. It was time to get started on Thermopolis. I had the approaches in, and now it was time to work on the town site itself. I went to Menards and picked up a sheet of one half inch plywood. 60 bucks! Ouch! When did plain old plywood get so expensive? But there it was. I cut it in two lengthwise and trimmed one of the pieces down to size. Here are the two sections just laid in place on the layout. Over the next couple of days, I installed the subroad bed risers for Thermopolis, then began permanently installing the plywood sheets. Of course, nothing ever goes completely smoothly, and the splice between plywood sections landed right on a riser. That was easily resolved though. I removed the riser and instead used it as the splice between the sheets. By the end of the 22nd, I had the Thermopolis subroad bed installed. About this time came the next interesting events of the month. Around the 21st, my wife got what seemed to be a cold, and I caught it a couple of days later. By the 23rd, I had a scratchy throat and was getting pretty stuffy, and she had almost no energy. Well, to make a long story short, on Monday the 24th, she was diagnosed with COVID, and on Tuesday the 25th, I was too. We both had pretty mild cases and now have both recovered. She had it a bit worse than me and still has a lingering cough. During this whole period, I didn't feel at all bad except for Sunday the 23rd when I spent the morning puking my guts out and wishing I was dead. But I think that was just some bad mozzarella cheese from a slice of pizza I had for breakfast that day. By the afternoon, I recovered sufficiently to lay out the Thermopolis track arrangement on the subroad bed. I'd been building turnouts for Thermopolis, and you could see the four I had finished positioned around the plywood. I pushed on installing the mainline cork road bed well into Thermopolis later that evening. Over the next few days, I glued down cork sheeting over the entire subroad bed. I used full strength yellow glue spread on the cork with a putty knife and foam brush. Here's a video clip showing how I installed one of the sections of cork sheeting.
Once the cork was down, I went on to installing track into town on January 28th. Here you can see the green super elevation tape in place for the final curve and a bead of caulk laid down the center of the roadbed. Once the caulk was spread using an old credit card, the track went in. That final curve into Thermopolis is a 70 inch radius. The last few days have mostly been spent installing the track at Thermopolis. The entire south end is installed, but the two north end turnouts are yet to be installed, though they have been built. Yesterday I wired up the south end tracks and labeled some wooden blocks for the various industries found there. I really need to build some more structures. The turnouts still need ground throws installed, but a train has been run into all accessible tracks in Thermopolis to test them out. One side note, I had to build seven turnouts for Thermopolis over the past month, three code 83 and four code 70. They're all finished, but when I finished that last code 70 turnout, I only had about five inches of code 70 rail left over. Talk about cutting it close. The last thing for the month, I wanted to get a bit of an idea of what the Wind River Canyon might feel like once scenery is in place. I took a bunch of scrap strips of foam and laid them around the area and stuck them up vertically to see what was what. It looks pretty stupid in the photos, but standing near Shoban in person, it really gives a bit of a sense of how the canyon will feel once the ceiling height scenery is started. I can hardly wait to make some progress in there. And so ended the first month of 2022. For the month of February, I might install the secondary trackage in Riverton, but I'm thoroughly sick of building turnouts right now. I certainly will finish track laying in Thermopolis and install ground throws. By the next update, Thermopolis should be fully operational, even if the industries are still all blocks of wood. I'm also going to continue roughing in scenery for the Wind River Canyon. Maybe I'll get past just the few sticks of foam you saw a minute ago. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next month.